tribe how you guys doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button and i hope you like this video this is going to be your review of the real housewives of potomac season 5 episode 13 so like these episodes keep getting more and more dry i guess it wasn't really a whole lot tonight y'all we start off we have giselle taking one ring shopping for um robin now Karen has already talked to Robin, so she knows exactly what Robin wants. She knows the stones and all that good stuff. And the first ring that Juan picked up was like $52,000. And he was like, yeah, no, that's a that's a bit above my budget. That was my that was my NBA budget. This my, you know, cop, you know, my cop and state budget, okay? So I need some a little cheaper. He told the lady he was shopping about 10,000. So they were able to find a ring that both of them thought Robin would like for under ten thousand dollars i think it was eighty nine thousand i mean eight thousand nine hundred listen i'm here for it i know people are gonna probably clown her about the you know they're gonna clown her about that but listen i ain't mad at it shot within your means that's part of the problem now people go out here and buy all the stuff that they can't afford or is without outside their budget and then they financing a wedding ring for 30 years and they don't stay married but five okay so listen I'm fine with it. I'm cool with it. Now, later on in the episode, they had a little family night. They went bowling. They had the parents, um, Robin's parents showed up. They had the kids. And when Robin ran to the bathroom, conveniently, um, Juan talked to the parents and talked to the boys about him um, proposing to Robin and um, asking for the parents' um, approval, I guess, or their permission and you know daddy ain't here for it but daddy is like listen she 40 she grown she got two kids y'all have been married before hell y'all been living together since i got divorced what i'm gonna say like what what i'm gonna say so i mean he said yeah you know mama said yeah and then and then robert came back from the bathroom so then we have Mon Monique. Poor Monique. Well, nobody else filmed with her. So we had to look at this whole long scene with her and Chris's god daddy while she putting together the VIP bags for the um, Not For Lazy Moms event. And then she... Remember, the event was going to be one thing because remember she had invited Chris and Candace. Remember, Candace had backed out. And then Karen and Ray, I think, was supposed to be on the panel. And they backed out. But then she changed the, I guess she ended up having to change the whole theme of the thing. And it's, it's something about transforming you or being a better you or loving you or showing, I don't know. But she invited the girls because she wanted to show, she wanted them to see the changes that she had made. Okay, now listen. Oh, Jesus, I'm so sick of this whole topic. So she called Robin and Robin was like, girl, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know. Okay. She called Wendy and Wendy was like, girl, girl. The last time I talked to you, you said you ain't feel no regret. And I would just be a hypocrite for me to hang out with somebody who just, you know, go around beating up on people and she don't have no no no, no sympathy, no regret, no empathy, nothing. So, yeah, nah, it's going to be a no for me, dog. And Robin was like, I think about it, but you know Robin wasn't coming, child. Because Robin didn't know what to say because Giselle hadn't told her what to say yet. Giselle hadn't told her whether they was going or not, so she didn't know how to answer the question because Monique didn't even invite Giselle. Robin didn't know what to do. She didn't know. She... Giselle, they tell her what to say, what to do, and whether they was going or not, okay? Now, I'm going to be honest, though. I understand where Robin and Wendy were coming from. I think Wendy is a little more self-righteous about the situation, but I understand where they were coming from. And Monique was like, how am I going show to them, show them that I'm different if they won't give me an opportunity to prove to them that I'm different? And again, I see that. But let's remember, y'all, let's put all this in perspective. All of this happened in a matter of a couple of weeks. And the last conversation they had with Monique, she was very defiant in the fact that she didn't have any remorse and she didn't feel no kind of way. Now, she did tell Wendy in the conversation that, you know, she was like, I don't want you to think that I'm still in that place. Like, I'm not. Like, I do feel regret. I do feel a way about the situation. And I'm really trying to show you guys that I'm in a different place. But Monique, that probably won't it. That one the time that wasn't the place, they ain't coming, okay? Ashley's coming. Karen said she would come, okay? Now, we, do I want to go there? 
Yeah, because this review ain't going to be that long. I'm just going to let y'all know. But let's go on to get there. Okay, so we get to um, the event, and Karen calls that morning and says, hey, I was sick. I'm not going to be able to make it. So the only person that ended up coming was Ashley. And here come Messy Ashley, okay? She going to tell Monique, well, you know, when we were down in Surrey, Virginia, you know, uh, Karen admitted to us that she told Candace that she would press charges. And, of course, that was a surprise to Monique. Monique was shocked and was like, oh, really? And she said, well, Karen has shown herself to be nothing but a friend th throughout this whole situation. She has shown herself to be a friend to me. So I feel like she didn't want to just automatically jump to conclusions or get pissed off at Karen without the benefit of the conversation. But she was definitely shocked by that. Now, let's be clear. And I know this is going to sound nitpicky. Somebody going to say I'm being nitpicky, and maybe I am. But... Karen didn't say press charges. She said she would look into legal matters. Now, that's nitpicky, I know. Um, but, again, we're going to get back to Miss... Well, we're going to get to Miss Kern now. So, Kern got... Um, that's my DC, Kern. Got ready to go to a life coach. He ain't trying to do therapy, but he would go to a life coach. So, they go to the life coach. Now, here's the thing. She said, well, the first thing we did didn't work. Oh, no, it worked. You just didn't like what happened. Because that woman, the, the, the former DJ that y'all that y'all talked to, she got Ray to say what's really on his mind. Now, you didn't like what he said, and you didn't like how it made you feel, but it's what you needed to hear. I mean, let's just be honest. He said, I don't know if I'm still in love with you. Now, that's hurtful, and that's hard, but I think the woman was getting some, some things done. I think she was able to have a create a good dialogue with the two of you. Now, what y'all did with the information that came out, that's another conversation. But anyway, so they go to a life coach, and basically, Ray said the same thing. He just found a better way of saying it. But what he said, essentially, was, listen, you've been Ray Huger's wife for the last 20 years. Now, I'm Karen Huger's husband, and that is an adjustment. Also, I'm looking at retirement, my third retirement, to be exact, and you are just starting. And that's an uncomfortable place because I'm ready to retire and go live by the, go live down in Florida somewhere by the beach with my retirement and not pay my tax, you know, pay, you know, it's a different tax situation down in Florida. That's why so many retired people go down there. And Karen is loving life in Potomac as the grind on. And that's really what their relationship, that's really what a lot of this uncomfortableness boils down to. Now, again, you might not like what Ray said, Karen, but Ray told you what the problem was. And then Karen said, well, you know, I also, you know, feel like we should acknowledge the fact that I helped you with your situation when you ran into your tax problem. And he did say thank you. She said, and I think I deserve a, a thank you for that. Now, do I think that Ray has never thanked Karen for helping him out of his tax debt? But then the flip side of me says, isn't that what married couples do? Like, you helped him spend that money he was making when he was running this company and not paying his taxes. I mean, why did you need a separate thank you? But okay, but he did. He thanked her, and she said she felt like it was sincere. So again... I don't know. Look. He said life was better when she all she had to do was worry about taking care of the house and take care of him. Karen, you don't have to like what he's saying, but the man telling you what's wrong, okay? He is telling you how he feel, and he is telling you what's wrong. Now, whether you like what the man is saying or not, that's a whole nother conversation, okay? Now, we over to Wendy's house where she had her boys drinking her breast milk, which... You know, I know on one hand, people are going to probably be like, oh my gosh, they were drinking the breast milk. But hell, they drank the breast milk when they was born. And it sounds like she doesn't have them drinking milk, which is not a bad thing because, you know, the reality of the situation is we as humans do not need to be drinking cow milk, okay? Because cow milk is the equivalent of breast milk for, I'm, I'm oversimplifying this, y'all. But there are nutrients and there are things that are in cow milk that we don't need in our body. Okay, because they're for cows. Okay. Anyway, she proceeds, she's having a, an event, wine with Wendy event. Okay. 
Um, it sounds very similar to Mimosas with Melody, but that's another that's another show and another conversation, child. Um, and she's inviting the ladies, and of course, once again, she invited everybody except for Monique, cause this is gonna be a dignified event, and she can't have somebody that is undignified at her event. And so she is having this, and you know, she lets Candace know that this is gonna be a safe space for her, okay? And she says, well, what's going on with you and Karen? And Candace says, well, you know, me and Karen need to talk because, you know, I was just really shocked by the things that I heard and saw. And uh, we need to speak, you know, because Kent Monique is telling lies and she has her friends out here lying for her. And, you know, I, I just, I, um, I just feel some kind of way about that. And so I'm going to need to talk to Miss Karen. Um, then we have this very uncomfortable scene between Giselle and Jamal. Let me tell you something. This scene, for me, solidified the fact that this whole situation between her and Jamal is an act. I ain't buying it, and I'm no longer entertaining it. I don't care. Moving on. I ain't even, I'm not even going to listen. That was the most awkward. And then she gets to, they, they, she's taking him to the airport. She gets to the airport, and she gets out to give him a hug. Ain't no kiss. It's just the awkward, you know what? Moving on. Um, the Not For Lazy Moms podcast event, like I said, I already told you about the conversation Ashley had with Monique, but it went on. Um, they didn't have as big of a crowd as Monique wanted, but she, and she did have to come out of her pocket to cover some things, but she said that ultimately, though, she's glad she did the event. She's going to do the event whether there's five people or 50 people, you know, and there's that, okay? Um, there was an awkward moment where the MC asked her a question about what was going on between her and Candace after she specifically told the MC. Now, again, I know this is nitpicky, but what she told the MC was, I'm not going to talk about the physical altercation. The question was, what is the status of your relationship with Candace? So that really ain't the same thing. But Monique sort of sidestepped it and said, you know, pray for us. Okay, we're going to pray for y'all. Okay. So we get down to the, the mimosas. I mean, mm, see, I'm mixing up shows. The Wine with Wendy event. And um, it was in conjunction with Black Girls Vote, which I, you know, which is, of course, great. Now, Robin, listen, Robin. I don't know who you hanging out with in the wardrobe department that keep talking you into these things, but whoever told you to put that wig on, don't ever speak to them again. It wasn't the answer. I understand you're trying to do some different things. You're trying to change it up, but that wasn't... Mm -mm. That one wasn't it, okay? So the event was really nice. Wendy looks like she is truly in her element. This is what Wendy says she wants to do, that she really wants to get into doing more of the um, political commentary and the political um, speak. Um, and then later on in the episode, somebody even called her congresswoman. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Wendy maybe move into um, the, polit throw her hat into the political arena. I wouldn't be um, surprised to see that at a later date. Um, but she definitely, it was a great moment, it was a great event, and I'm glad that they included a lot of this part of it. I think because we are closer to the election, and with everything going on, I think the producers decided to keep a lot of this footage in, whereas I think if this were being showed at a, at a different time, that they may not show as much of this footage, but I'm glad that they did. Uh, because they did give us a lot of great information about making your voice count and being proactive in your democracy. What I think was also very interesting or very, very good that they did was that they um, talked about the importance of local elections and how, you know, voting every four years and expecting a person in the White House to fix all of your local issues is not the answer and how important it is to show up at the polls every election and hold those people accountable. Your council, your city council members, your attorney generals, when we start talking about, you know, um, 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 criminal um, reform. I can't get the word out, but y'all know what I'm talking about. We're directly talking about who is your DA? Who is your district attorney? How are they prosecuting cases? You know, when we start talking about issues with your schools, who's on your school board? Why are certain things being allowed to happen in certain school districts that aren't being allowed to happen in others? And so I thought that was so important. That was great. Then we have Candace and Karen 
Candace pulls Karen aside to have the conversation to ask her basically why you being so nice to Monique when everybody else hates Monique and why don't you hate her too? Which is what it's really just sounded like to me. But let me tell you something, honey. Karen Huger. Karen Huger got Candace all the way together. Karen said, Candace, you have a brilliant mind. But you also have a brilliant mouth. And you say some things out your mouth that are reckless. She said, you want to know why I'm showing Monique some grace? When last year, I had your back. When I didn't agree with everything you did. But I had your back and I stood with you because you are my friend. She said, I'm doing, she said, I'm not doing anything for Monique that I didn't do for you. I mean, I think people want to forget that Candace. I mean, yes, it was a butter knife, but Candace picked up a weapon and her husband had to physically pick her up and carry her out of the room. Physically pick her up and carry her out of the room while she was doing this with a knife in Ashley's face. Now, granted, Ashley had been asked to leave. She left and came back. That's another conversation. But Candace, Karen had your back when, when all of that was going on. And what I find to be very interesting is all of that went right over Candace's head. She didn't hear it. She didn't receive it. All she said was, but I was physically attacked and I don't understand. I mean, I've defended Karen all these years and maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe I shouldn't have defended her. It went right over her head. None of what was said was received. None of what was said was received. I was like, so you didn't hear none of that. You didn't understand none of what Karen just said to you about defending you the same way she's got Monique's back. And now while this is going on downstairs, upstairs, Giselle is being messy and talking about, because Wendy, Wendy didn't mess around and told Giselle about that statement that Karen made back at the lake house about how she paid Uncle Ben's taxes, okay? And she talking about some well. I think I need to talk to Karen about it. For what? For why? What 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 purpose did that serve to talk to Karen about Ray paying her taxes? Why why why? Just messy. So then Wendy goes down because she want to check on the ladies and make sure Candace is okay. And Wendy starts jumping on Karen about holding Monique accountable. And Wendy was like, I think all we want is for you to admit that Monique did a horrific thing and hold her accountable. And, you know, Karen was like, but I am holding her accountable. It may not be the way y'all want it to be. It may not look the way y'all want it to look, but I'm holding her accountable. But she's still my friend. I And, of course, Bravo, you know, they flash back to when Karen told Monique, you fucked up. And you're going to have to stand in it, but I will walk with you. I will hold your hand through it as your friend. And, again, I don't know what else these ladies want from Karen. I just, I don't know. What Karen said is valid. Listen, last year, when you were persona non grata, I had your back. And the same way I had your back, I have I have Monique's back. And that's pretty much that. So, I don't know. Listen, I'm over it. Y'all know I'm tired of talking about this. But they just getting on my nerves. And Wendy, you coming down there inserting yourself. Like, it don't have nothing to, that ain't had nothing to do with you. That wasn't your conversation. That wasn't your situation. It had nothing to do with you. And Candace ain't going to hear nothing outside of what Candace wants to hear. Because I feel like I feel like what Karen said was valid and Candace should have received it. But she didn't. Anyway, that's all I got. Talk to y'all later. Peace.